Hi friends, today I wanted to read chapter four of Charlotte's Web. And this chapter is titled Loneliness. Makes me sad just thinking that Wilbur's lonely in the barnyard. The next day was rainy and dark. Rain fell on the roof of the barn and dripped steadily from the eaves. Rain fell in the barnyard and ran in crooked courses down into the lane where thistles and pigweed grew. Rain spattered against Mr. Zuckerman's kitchen windows and came gushing out of the downspouts. Rain fell on the backs of the sheep as they grazed in the meadow. When the sheep tired of standing in the rain, they walked slowly up the lane and into the fold. Rain upset Wilbur's plans. Wilbur had planned to go out this day and dig a new hole in his yard. He had other plans too. His plans for the day went something like this. Breakfast at 6.30, skim milk, crusts, middlings, bits of donuts, wheat cakes with drops of maple syrup sticking to them, potato skins, leftover custard pudding with raisins, and bits of shredded wheat. Breakfast would be finished at seven. From seven to eight, Wilbur planned to have a talk with Templeton, the rat that lived under his trough. Talking with Templeton was not the most interesting occupation in the world, but it was better than nothing. From eight to nine, Wilbur planned to take a nap outdoors in the sun. From nine to 11, he planned to dig a hole or a trench and possibly find something good to eat hidden in the dirt. From 11 to 12, he planned to stand still and watch flies on the boards, watch bees in the clover, and watch swallows in the air. 12 o'clock, lunchtime. Middlings, warm water, apple parings, meat gravy, carrot scrapings, meat scraps, stale hominy, and the wrapper of a package of cheese. Lunch would be over at one. From one to two, Wilbur planned to sleep. From two to three, he planned to scratch itchy places by rubbing against the fence. From three to four, he planned to stand perfectly still and think of what it was like to be alive and wait for fern. At four would come supper, skim milk, provender, leftover sandwich from Lurvie's lunchbox, prune skins, a morsel of this, a bit of that, fried potatoes, marmalade drippings, a little more of this, a little more of that, a piece of baked apple, and a scrap of upside down cake. Wilbur had gone to sleep thinking about these plans. He awoke at six and saw the rain, and it seemed as though he could not bear it. I get everything all beautifully planned out, and it has to go in rain, he said. For a while, he stood gloomily indoors. Then he walked to the door and looked out. Drops of rain stuck to his face. His yard was cold and wet. His trough had an inch of rainwater in it. Templeton was nowhere to be seen. Are you out there, Templeton, called Wilbur. There was no answer. Suddenly, Wilbur felt lonely and friendless. One day, just like another, he groaned, I'm very young. I have no real friend here in the barn. It's going to rain all morning and all afternoon, and Fern won't come back in such bad weather. Oh, honestly. And Wilbur was crying again for the second time in two days. At 6.30, Wilbur heard the banging of a pail. Lurvie was standing outside in the rain, stirring up breakfast. Come on, pig, said Lurvy. Wilbur did not budge. Lurvie dumped the slops, scraped the pail, and walked away. He noticed that something was wrong with the pig. Wilbur didn't want food. Wilbur wanted love. He wanted a friend, someone who could play with him. He mentioned this to the goose who was sitting quietly in a corner of the sheepfold. Won't you come and play with me, he asked. Sorry, Sonny, sorry, said the goose. I'm sit, sit, sitting in my eggs. Eight of them, gotta keep them toasty, oasty, oasty warm. I have to stay right here, no flibberty, ibberty, gibbet. I'm expecting goslings. Well, I didn't think you were expecting woodpeckers, said Wilbur bitterly. So next he asked the lambs, will one of you play with me? Certainly not, said the lamb. In the first place, I cannot get into your pen. In the second place, I am not interested in pigs. Huh, said Wilbur. Hmm. Oh, be quiet, said the lamb. Go play by yourself. I don't play with pigs. Sadly, Wilbur sat down and listened to the rain. Soon he saw the rat climbing down a slanting board that he used as a stairway. Will you play with me, Templeton? asked Wilbur. Play, said Templeton. Play? I don't know the meaning of the word. Well, said Wilbur, it means to have fun, to frolic, to skip, to run and make merry. I don't do any of those things if I can avoid them, replied the rat sourly. I prefer to spend my time eating, gnawing, spying, and hiding. I'm a glutton, but not a merrymaker. Right now, I'm going to your trough to eat your breakfast, since you haven't the sense to eat it. And so Templeton crept along and into a private tunnel he had dug between the door and the trough. Templeton was crafty. The tunnel was an example of his skill and cunning and enabled him to get from the barn to his hiding place 
He had tunnels and runways all over the farm. He usually slept during the daytime and was only out in the dark. Wilbur watched him disappear. In a moment, he saw the rat's sharp nose poke out from underneath the wooden trough. Cautiously, Templeton pulled himself up over the edge of the trough. This was almost more than Wilbur could stand. On this dreary day, to see his breakfast by being eaten by someone else, he knew Templeton was getting soaked out there in the rain, but that didn't comfort him. Friendless, dejected, and hungry, he threw himself down in the manure and sobbed. There's a picture of poor, poor lonely Wilbur. Makes me feel sad. Late that afternoon, Lurvy went to Zuckerman. There's something wrong with that pig. He didn't touch his food. Oh, give him some sulfur and molasses, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur couldn't believe what was happening to him when Lurvy caught him and for forced the medicine down his throat. This was the worst day of his life. He didn't know if he could endure the loneliness anymore. Darkness settled over everything. Soon there were only shadows and noises of the sheep chewing their cud and occasionally the rattle of a cow chain. You can imagine Wilbur's surprise when out of the darkness came a small voice he had never heard before. It sounded rather thin, but pleasant. Do you want a friend, Wilbur? It said. I'll be a friend to you. I've watched you all day and I like you. But I can't see you, said Wilbur, jumping to his feet. Where are you and who are you? I'm right up here, said the voice. Go to sleep. You'll see me in the morning. So Wilbur's got a friend. I wonder if you know who it is. We'll find out when we read the next chapter of Charlotte's Web. Take care, friends.